Well, good morning, and thank you for listening to WXOX 97.1 in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, this is Artist Talk with LVA, the show produced by Louisville Vision Art, and I'm Keith Waits, and I'm here today talking to uh, uh, two people from the University of Louisville. Uh, Elizabeth Ellis Riley is a curator at the Photographic Archives and the Archives and Special Collections uh, in the University of Louisville. Uh, also, but particularly important uh, for us, for five years, she hosted the wonderful show Fuzzbox here on WXOX 97.1. Thanks. Welcome back to the Airwaves, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Keith. And with her uh, is Haley Marie Elgood, who is a project archivist at the University of Louisville Libraries. Uh, she studied library science at Indiana University, got her master's degree up there in Bloomington, where I used to live. We we're and so yeah, we, we that's a whole other topic. But anyway, they're here today to talk about uh, a, an exhibit that's going to open uh, on July 14th: Graphic Pioneer: The Early Poster Designs of Jewish Friedman, 1965 to 1980. The opening reception for that exhibition will be in the Ekstrom Library on July 14th and will include a ribbon cutting and dedication of the new Julius Friedman Gallery at 5.30 p.m. So two exciting things to talk about. Uh, and of course, I don't I don't know that I have to say, but I'm going to start with Elizabeth. Let's start with you. Um, I, I'm, I would gather that a lot of people listen to the show know who Julius Friedman is, but let's start with how, how would you how would you describe who Julius Friedman was and and how that leads into this exhibit. Well, Julius Friedman was one of Louisville's most well-known artists and designers. Uh, he started his career in the late 60s and really just created, I mean, he was a graphic designer first, um, and then he branched out doing his own artwork. But people mostly know him for his posters that he created. And he created a lot of posters for Louisville cultural and arts organizations such as LVA and mm -hmm. the Louisville Orchestra and the ballet and, and so on. And some of those posters that he created even um, garnered international uh, recognition. So his work is really well known um, even beyond Louisville. But he was um, very well liked, very well known in Louisville, part of the art scene. He ran a gallery for a little while as well. Um, and he passed away in 2017. Right. And so, uh, Haley Marie Elgood, uh, correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong, I believe you were hired in to work on this project as a specialist on this, right? Yes, I was hired and I began in February working on this project and just going through the stuff and getting it organized so we can make it available to researchers, hopefully next year. Right, because that, that's the part beyond this exhibit is that it's it's getting archived, which is a, probably a very, very long uh, and uh, sometimes probably arduous process. Um, had you been aware of Julius Friedman before this? Actually, no, I was not familiar with Julius Friedman until I came across this job posting. But once I came across this job hosting, I became really interested in Julius Friedman just because he was local. That was something I really enjoyed. I'm not from Louisville, but I'm from Kentucky. So I like that he was a Kentucky artist and he stayed loyal to Louisville throughout his career. He had like several opportunities to leave, but he always stayed here. So that was something that I really liked. And also he was just so talented in many different formats. Right, I was. I love that about Julius and uh, Ed Hamilton. Another example of people that seemed like they could have easily relocated to New York or whatever kind of location, and but stayed here. And of course, nowadays with the digital world, it's much easier to be a world presence and still live in uh, a, a good town like Louisville. Um, Elizabeth, uh, now I think there's probably going to be a lot of people, uh, at least of my generation. He, he hadn't done posters uh, so much in recent years, but. A lot of us will remember some of those posters, but I have to believe I don't know the work that dates back into 1965. I think I was first aware of his poster work in maybe the mid 70s or something mm -hmm. like that, or late 70s. And I know there was a there was a book that was published, and that you know the, the the famous ones that a lot of people know, like the ballet with the the toe the shoe and the and the, and the, the egg. And the egg, uh, <laughs> and the and the fresh paint, the yeah. the the egg yolk colors. I mean, those those the sort of iconic ones. But so, talk to me a little bit about that earlier stuff, though. And I think the example that's on your announcement, yes, 
uh, is it dates back from that earlier period too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what's interesting about this exhibit is that we sort of end it, we, we're going to present it chronologically in a way, and we're going to be ending it with those two posters that you mentioned, both Fresh Paint and the uh, Louisville Ballet Toe on Egg, because um, they sort of represent a transformation in Friedman's work and recognition. Um, but this, we start with 1965 with one of, uh, I think the first poster that he designed and it was uh, a peace poster. And it's very indicative of peace posters of the time of the 1960s that features a dove. And um, you would look at it and immediately think 1960s, but it's very different than um, the work that you may be familiar with, which, um, that, that Friedman created mostly in the 80s and the 90s where it's very photography heavy. Um, this early stuff um, was very graphic, uh, graphically heavy. Um, even manipulated photographs um, down to, you know, tones and, and scales um, not, that were originally photographs that he then manipulated to, um, to present in a more graphic way. And bold colors, um, contrasting colors, repetition, scale. These are, are all of the, um, the different elements you see in some of the earlier work, which I have to mention, um, a lot of was created with his business partner, Nathan, Nathan Feldy. They ran a design studio called Images from uh, late 60s to around 1980. 1981 is when Nathan Feldy left to go um, teach at university. Um, so, and we have that uh, in the gallery, it'll be on the labels, which posters were designed just by Julius Friedman and which ones were co-designed between Julius and Nathan. So that's an important point. Well, and do you, do you know about the location was that there was a time when, uh, when Julius had a space down in second in Maine, what is now the Whiskey Row Lofts. Do you, right. Was that where Images was located? I believe so. And I'm going to um, turn to Haley Marie because she's been doing so much research. I believe so. I actually had the chance to speak with Nathan Feldy. He has been a very big part in getting this together. So I've been corresponding with him like through email and also like Zoom. And so initially their studio started out in a van. They were working like out of a van, like this 1930s van they had bought. And then they eventually moved to the studio downtown. So, a van seems like such an appropriate place to make a peace poster. <laughs> from the 60s, you know, I mean, my gosh. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I've seen there's a there's a picture, and 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 one of the reasons why I know what I know about it is that uh, Louis Vuitton had a gallery on the second floor of that building at one point, and it, all these people would come around and say like you know, we were all in this building at one point, you know, and Julius and, blah, blah, and Ed, everybody had studio space. Those main, those main street buildings used to be uh, before revitalization of downtown. Um, artists could go rent like a couple thousand square feet for like $200 a month in those buildings. They, you know, nobody really saw a great value in them. And so they had been a real artist's sort of, uh, I don't know, colony is not the right word, but it had been an artist district for a long time. Right. Was it? Uh, was there a school? Was the Center for Photographic Studies out of there? It was down there. I'm not sure exactly which building it was, but yes, okay. it was also down in that area. And I, I think it was part of that whole energy that was happening then. Yeah, I think it was part of like where the Gold House is, the Center for Photographic Studies. The old Gold House, I believe. I think the old Gold House. Yeah. Well, and I'm not sure that that isn't. Second um, in Maine. Yeah, second in Maine. Right. You know, it's, 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 see, this is what I think must be so fascinating about your job. I mean, I don't know that I want to go get a new degree to do this, but, uh, you know, to dig into the history and find out all these things, you just think it's just some stupid building. And then you find out the history it's had all these times, all, all these, through all the years and, uh, being the old Galt house, which, and then it touches upon so much history there, but all this, all this art stuff. So I didn't, I hadn't put it together that it was that actual building. I knew that Center for Photographic Studies was on uh, East Main Street in that block, I think. Mm -hmm. But see, we're always finding out cool stuff. 
Yeah, I'm also familiar with um, that space being very artist heavy at that time because our Luma collection in the archive, which is the Louisville Underground Music Archive, which we began in 2013, there is a collection of photographs of one particular show that happened, like a punk new wave show of Louisville bands with um, 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 <laughs> with Rigo, Chili Rigo was singing and he had painted his body red. And I just remember everybody who was telling me about that photograph was telling me that it was at Second and Main and that it had a lot of artist studios and that there was some art school there. So, um, I mean, I could ask a million questions of, of people I know and probably get to the bottom of the, the artistic history of that spot. Well, and memory being what it is, it, when people say Second and Main, it could have been any one of the dozen buildings leading off from Second and Main. True, Whiskey Row, yeah. Whiskey Row. Um, well, let's get let's let's get back to our our focus on Julius a little bit. But it's interesting to me that you don't have to spend a lot of time talking about Julius before you you could easily get into a tangent about history of artists in town because absolutely, yeah, that's he's he's right in the thick of all that. Um, so was he? So did he? Did he spend a period in, in here, 1965 to 80, where he was only doing posters? Like, when did he really start branching off into more personal work and photography and all those kinds of things? Because I think, am I mistaken? Was he maybe a printmaker uh, very early on? Um, I don't know, Haley Marie. Do you know if he did printing? I know he studied graphic design at University of Louisville in the 1960s. Well, he had a very close relationship with the printers here in Louisville. Um, the big one at that time that he was working with was Panera Lithography Company. Mm -hmm. And so they gave him a lot of freedom to work with like the printing press. So he wasn't exactly doing printmaking, but he had a lot of freedom to play around the printing presses and stuff. So he wasn't just throwing the design out to somebody. He was actually getting in there and doing hands-on. Yes. Yes. He was very hands-on, which I think is something very interesting. I wonder how easily that you could do that nowadays. <laughs> I don't think it's like that anymore. <laughs> well, it also it reminds me actually something that's really interesting about the work that we're showing. And this is all pre Photoshop. This is all pre digital. Yeah. This is all pre computer. And I studied graphic design in college in the 90s, but we, we started using Photoshop and different computer programs then. And when I see the work that they created, they really had to make these sort of um, you know, different effects um, manually. And I know Nathan has talked to Haley Marie about that and she didn't understand a word he was saying because it was so complicated and so out of the scope of anything we've done, we have no clue. Well, right, now people look at something like the fresh paint image and assume like, yeah, easy peasy to change the color on those egg yolks, nothing mm -hmm. to it, right? Because you, you just digitalize everything. He but did it, I believe after, he did it at the printers, right, mm -hmm. Haley Marie? Yeah. Ah. That, and that's a good example of that kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah. But then the one with the, is it the French horn with the ice cream? I yeah. think it just was just stacking ice cream. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he worked with a lot of other photographers as well to shoot these images for a lot of those posters. Do mm -hmm. you happen to remember, Haley Marie, who shot the French horn with the ice cream by any chance? It's not in the exhibit we're about to show, but... Mm -hmm. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah. But he worked with like so many different photographers in Louisville. I think that's something else that makes this whole collection very interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of collaborative elements to it because he worked with so many people. And so it's really just tells you a little bit of history about the Louisville art scene as we were talking about. Well, and probably a lot of people he connected with through uh, the Center for Photographic Studies, which we should say was founded by C.J. Presma. Yeah. Just we, we dot that I. And, uh, and the image that we used for the announcement is, uh, was a program designed for um, the Center for Photographic Studies. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, verbiage that is done graphically. Yes. It's an interesting thing. We'll just, we'll just point people to the website for right now. Exactly. <laughs> What, where, like, where can people find out more information about the exhibit before beforehand? Like, is it, uh, is that on the? Is it? I know it's University of Louisville, but uh, is it extra libraries or is it? What would well, be the archives and special collections, social media. Um, also, the University of Louisville Photographic Archives has a Facebook page, and we've created an event for the opening reception, so people can find information there. 
um, as well as our um, University of Louisville Archives and Special Collections Instagram page. Okay. Was uh, so you know we 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 know how these things happen. Uh, we were talking earlier. I don't know if we'd started recording yet. Uh, but so so the fact that there's going to be this Julius Freeman gallery is obviously something that's done. It's either uh, it was either done at the suggestion, you know, somehow his family, his sister, I think, was in, uh, is the person who was really handling his estate. Uh, was there a lot of involvement from the family, from her or any other, but yeah. anybody else in the family in what you're doing? Absolutely. Well, I should probably give you the whole story about how this came about. Um, oh, please. Shortly after Julius's death in 2017, I was approached by a really close friend of his that said, um, we are working on clearing out his house, which if anybody had been to Julius's house, you know, it was large. It was like 9,000 square feet, foot home. Um, and wondering if you would like this stuff for the archives. So Julius's working material, um, and I said, yeah, absolutely. So myself and uh, my fellow archivists and colleagues spent about five days in the house just gathering material from his offices. He had an office on the first floor and then the basement had at least three or four different rooms in it, which had just a huge amount of stuff that he had used for his artwork and his graphic design since the 60s. He had been in that house probably since the 70s, right, Haley Marie? Um, he and Nathan Feldy purchased it together. They fixed it up. They ran images out of there eventually. Um, but we were finding stuff from the 70s and just boxing it up, boxing it up, you know, trying to make some sense of it because I have to say, um, Friedman was not one to be very organized with his material and he didn't label stuff or document very well. So we just got just piles of stuff, but we knew that it was going to take a lot of focus and attention to make sense of it. And that is exactly why we had to hire a project archivist for this collection. And that's Haley Marie, because we needed somebody dedicated to it, working every day doing research to find out what is this material? When was it from? What was it for? Um, and so before we took the collection, we had gotten an agreement from Friedman's sister, Carol Abrams, that money would come along with the collection so that we could hire a project archivist to process the collection so that we can organize it, then make it available to the public and researchers, um, as well as some money for um, its storage. And if you know anything about Julius Friedman, you know he liked color in his artwork and his yeah. design. And so color materials, particularly color photographic materials, really need cold storage to be preserved. And we had been hoping to transform our old wet dark rooms that hadn't been used in a decade into cold storage. And with her, with the money that she donated for that, we, we are about to begin um, doing that construction for cold storage. Um, we were able to hire Haley Marie and then we were able to uh, renovate our gallery, our photo archives gallery. And that is why it's now named the Julius Freeman Gallery. Wonderful. Well, Haley Marie, uh, looking, looking at your uh, resume, you graduated with your master's degree in 2021? Yes, this is my first professional job. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, this seems like a pretty plum first job, I would guess, but also a very challenging one. <laughs> Did you expect to, to get something like this coming out of school? Yeah. yeah, I really didn't know what I would get. I, would, I knew that there's a, a lot of project archivist jobs. That's how a lot of people get their start in archives. But I didn't realize I would get a collection this fast and also just very rich in material. So I just really like all the different materials in this collection mm -hmm. because Julius Freeman designed so many different things. He designed posters, he designed books, stationery. Um, let's see, just all kinds of different materials. And then the, on top of that, he was also a photographer. Yeah. So it's just a very rich collection. So it's been probably beyond my wildest dreams to get a collection that has so many interesting materials. Well, and so then this job also, I assume, has a, 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 a finite 
date of i mean i don't know but is this like a contract for a year two three is that sort of a that's what a project archivist is life is like mm -hmm. yes so i started in february and it's a one-year project archivist position getting the collection organized and available ready to be accessible to researchers so the project will go till next february and then you'll have you'll be moving on to your next it's, it's probably going to be a hard act to follow right yes that's for sure you might get some ordinary it won't be something nearly as dynamic as julius friedman maybe mm -hmm. i hope not i hope you do get another dynamic but it's like again i just think like coming right out of school what a great job it seems yeah. like I know, I know friends who've had project archivist positions processing like uh, senators' papers, and woof, is that boring? <laughs> well, unless you come across some sort of scandal, I guess. But right, they should be looking for one. But uh, yeah, they possibly could. They probably they probably put that stuff somewhere else before they hire a project ar archivist. Though you never know. <laughs> um. So. So Elizabeth, do you think there's a chance like this exhibit, how long is this exhibit going to be up? This exhibit is going to be up till mid December. So there's oh, going to be a, a lot of opportunity for um, a lot of time for people to come down and check it out. Maybe even visit more than once. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you think that, um, can you easily imagine maybe going back into this material and doing another exhibit down the line? Oh, certainly. Um, the, the, the challenge was um, Julius's sister Carol wanted to have an exhibit open in July of this year as the fifth anniversary of his passing. Mm -hmm. And because the collection was not yet processed, I said, okay, let's do an exhibit of his posters because that's the low hanging fruit. That'll be the easiest thing to pull out of the collection and be able to positively identify as a poster. And then when we started, Haley Marie, myself, and our colleague Cassidy Mirror started going through the posters. Um, there was just way too much for our one little gallery. So mm -hmm. that's why we limited the scope to just his early work for this one exhibit. But there will absolutely be many other opportunities for us to delve further into the collection and exhibit more of his stuff. Could be posters from later on, other decades. It could be his photographic work. It could be drawings that he's done or, or, or just um, an, an overview of his career with other sorts of uh, materials. But yeah, absolutely. This is just one tiny little piece of the collection. Well, and it just makes sense, I guess, to start at the beginning. Exactly. So you could eventually over the years have a series of three or four or whatever that all together sort of form a, a complete retrospective. Right, right. Yes, I know. And then was it 2015, maybe the Fraser Museum had a retrospective right. of Friedman's work mm -hmm. and they had a much larger space to do that. So um, that, that was great for Julius, um, but we just don't have that space. Well, it was great for Julius, and he had new work in that exhibit yeah. too—a lot of new work and uh, the work on uh, the book, the, which was, I guess, his last project. Well, um, actually, we're we're going to be displaying uh, the poster from the book on a separate outside of the gallery, right near the archives entrance. There will be a little wall where we're going to have the book, the poster for the book, and a few different um, physical pieces from that series that he did, where he deconstructed books. Right. Um, yeah, so we will be showing some of that. Uh, well, that that's cool. There, there's no, there's so well, and I guess that's more tied to the fact that you're dedicating the gallery, like it's a part of the yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I remember the Fraser exhibit, and I, it was great. It was very exciting, but I also remember that the poster aspect of it was it was so overwhelming, and they had them all over the. I mean, that I think that in a way, it's it's that's one kind of impact, right? But at the same time that sort of exhibit was not the kind of exhibit where you could really spend time studying the work, you know? So I'm looking forward to the idea of, of this kind of focused exhibit. Good. Uh, it seems to me, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like that, what that did was just kind of show you again, this mountain of work Yeah. that were just the, po whatever posters they put up was probably still not all of it, but it was a lot of posters, but it was sort of, you know, just, yeah. just a lot well, of walking. telling of, of Julius's career as as both an artist and a designer because he designed posters he designed books did a lot of book design and a lot of locally published books uh, brochures 
um, corporate uh, yearly reports was a big thing he did that, and, and both he and Nathan Feldy did just to pay the bills and be able to do free posters for local cultural organizations. Um, but he, but his personal artistic work, he was a photographer and he printed on really unique surfaces like metals and fabrics. Um, he was a sculptor, he did sculpture. Um, he did furniture design. Um, <laughs> he did collaborative videos with um, um, Richard Van Cleek. And so he worked in so many different formats that I can imagine, you know, of course a retrospective is gonna be full. Well, and again, probably can't be one show. Right. You know, it just really, unless you have a, a warehouse or something, you can turn over to it. I, you know, he, the, the last thing that I was involved with him about, he had an exhibit he wanted to show. Um, and, and just to your point about services, he was the first person I saw printing on uh, aluminum. Right. Uh, and now that's a very, very common, at least, you know, nobody was doing it then and around here. And now it's a very, very common approach to printing uh, photography, but uh, in, in a show he did at the Water Tower with uh, uh, his, his wife Cheryl, uh, they um, Cheryl Hamilton, uh, her paintings, his photographs of her palette because he was so fascinated with her palette. Mm -hmm. He he was doing that then, and it got widely copied. And but then the last show that that I was involved with him on, he wanted to show these images that he was he was taking a model around on his farm because he had all this wisteria and shooting her in among the wisteria. And then Devin Katayama, who was working at local public media back then, uh, the terrific uh, reporter, he was out, he got involved and he made uh, he made an audio piece, not for Louisville Public Media or NPR or anybody, but just produced his own sort of audio piece. And so that was playing in the gallery um, with, uh, with, with these images and some wisteria vines we had in there wow. and stuff. Uh, so, but, you know, he was, he was more excited about his, his collaborators. He saw the model as 100% a collaborator in what he was doing, not just a, a, a person for hire in that, in that sort of regard. Um, and so I, I, I know that there was a lot of times an image of Julius that he was somehow this sort of arrogant prima donna, and I found him to be the exact opposite. I found him to be so warm and generous. He liked to share his opinions with you, but... <laughs> Uh, but he was always interested in what other people were doing and doing as much to 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 boost them or support them or, or highlight them as what he was doing himself. Absolutely, um, so, yeah. yeah. I thought and he was. The I learned about his collaboration with the ballet dancer Erica De La O. Yes, yeah. Erica. Um, in 2012, the Photographic Archives celebrated our 50th anniversary, and we did a large exhibition down at the Cressman Gallery called Retrospect. And I invited local photographers to come into the archives um, and either pick something from our collections to inspire them to create something or pull something that had already inspired them. And we were going to display the works beside, beside themselves. And so the work that Julius selected was a, a vintage portrait of a little girl in a ballerina angel costume. And he said that that specific photograph inspired him to start photographing dancers and ballet dancers. And so for the promotion of that exhibit, I used his work. So his photograph of Erica De La O and the original photograph from the photo archives that inspired him. And that was used on our announcement. Well, see, there's so many different avenues we could spend talking. Here we are talking about stuff that's not even a part of this exhibit. Um, but that's that's why all of this is so good. You know, it's such a, such a dynamic, uh, character in the Louisville landscape. Do you have any favorites? Let me, Haley, Haley Marie, I don't want to be ignoring you. Haley Marie, when you look at this work, were there some favorites that pop out for you? Well, part of what makes this exhibit great is that we're showing posters that haven't really been seen as much as the other more famous ones. And there's one we have, and it's got photos of it, of like a wide variety of people. And it was done back in the early 70s and it's called human development and it was for a, it was part of a brochure for uh, urban development I'm trying to remember the exact title, the urban development renewal. urban renewal yes and it was a brochure related to urban renewal but it included a poster of all these different people 
And it's cool because it also includes a photo of Julius and his business partner, Nathan Feldy. It's just really neat because it shows a wide variety of people. And so it's very interesting. Yeah, it's fun. It's just a grid of, I don't know, maybe 50 portraits of local Louisvillians. And you, we're going to challenge everybody who comes through the gallery to find Nathan and to find Julius's portraits. <laughs> and it's like, it's from the early 70s. So there's always like very 70s hair and fashion too. So it makes it really fun. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Nathan Feldy looks like, but I've seen Julius. I've seen pictures of Julius from that period. I might have a shot at picking out Julius. I always feel like you can pick out Julius over over a lot of other people uh so what about you elizabeth what were there were there favorite things like you know in other words was there a poster that sort of like you just took to your heart well i i used it on the the announcement for the exhibit okay. <laughs> so the image of um it was a photograph taken um by a student of the center for photographic studies i don't know which one but um it's a of a a sort of silhouette of a person with their arms up in a fashion that makes it look like a butterfly or shape of a butterfly with a repeated sort of um, grade of oranges, yellows, and, and reds. Um, and I just, I just thought that that was a great design. I love the colors. I, I love the stark black with the, with the bright colors. And, um, and that's what I went with. But I also really like the series that both Nathan and Julius designed for the Speed Museum film series. Yes. The C.W. Griffith film series. And we have, I don't know how many, we have maybe nine posters from mm -hmm. that series. And I love all of them. I'm, I'm with you. I, I love that series too. And uh, I was going to tell you that was my favorite, <laughs> might be my favorite group. <laughs> I can still remember some of those images. And I know, I know one, of course, which is now, I don't know, is it problematic? There was one of a revolver. It was for the noir. It's in, it's in there. Yeah. And it's, you know, now people might get uptight about that, but it's a, it's a immaculate image. Uh, and I remember the D.W. Griffith one where the, the figure, his, his figure was cut out of the yeah. image and things. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I find that, uh, you know, at a certain point, his work, it's one of those things where this, the be his best posters seem like such simple ideas that they really, you don't, you have to really think about what work went into them. They, 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 they just seem like they're an idea that just popped into his head and he just did it. You know, that they, they're that simple and that good at communicating the idea. And that's really what all this design is communication, you know, and I don't have to tell you guys. And I, I think those kinds of posters that we're talking about in the film series and that he did for the ballet and orchestra, those all do that. They're just so, there's clarity. Absolutely. Work that it's, see, I'm getting excited just talking about it more. Well, you know, what's great is that Haley Marie reached out to the man who curated that film series and worked with Julius and Nathan on those posters. And Haley Marie, you can talk more about that. I think part of the reason why those posters turn out so amazing is because I talked to Scott Hammond, who was director of the film series, and he said he pretty much just gave them full creative control over the posters and basically let them do whatever they wanted. Like sometimes he would provide like an image of like whoever the film star was, that the film festival was gonna focus on. But other than that, he pretty much just let them do whatever they want. And I think it really speaks volumes because they were able to experiment with like different techniques. So it really let their creativity shine through. You know, why doesn't the Speed Museum have those posters outside their cinema? <laughs> it just occurred to me. They have that beautiful cinema. And uh, oh, well, anyway, that's a whole that's a whole nother question. Um, um, so besides the two of you are was there more of a team to this or is it how many people actually are working on this? It's the three of us, uh, Haley Marie, myself and our colleague Cassidy Mirror. She is our imaging manager in the photographic archives and she also does all of the prep for the exhibits. So she um, does the framing, does the mat cutting um, and then usually does the hanging of the work. Although we will, we, 
three of us are going to meet next week to really um, talk about mounting and, and the order in which we're going to put everything and and some of the other stuff that we're going to display alongside that are some brochures that Julius had designed in a in a case in the middle of the room that won't be hanging but it'll be a display case um, so it's really the three of us well then it also occurs to me though it seems like this whole project is a lot of work for three people and again I, I know you're all smart and talented and dedicated but at the same time, I'm, I'm assuming, Elizabeth, that, I mean, Haley was hired for this, but you're, you have probably a lot of other things going on as you work through a project like this and that you're balancing out. I mean, it's, you don't stop, you don't have, you don't get to stop your, your reg regular workflow. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I do have a lot of other things. And actually we have another huge project that's happening that um, we're going to be announcing in September. So this is so it's funny because these projects have been brewing for years and are happening and are just sort of coming to the surface and happening at the exact same time. So I have been very stressed this spring, <laughs> but I'm so excited to get this exhibit up and 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 I'm I'm a little less stressed now because we have things framed and you know we've decided you know we made a lot of decisions um, that hadn't been made earlier on that um, I'm really happy with so a lot of the work's been done but yes um, I'm so grateful to have both Haley Marie and Cassidy helping. And is Cat was Cassidy also a, a project archivist hired for this or was she a? No, she's our imaging manager, so she oh, does a lot of already, planning, okay. printing. Um, and exhibits, as well as some processing of collections. And she does our social media, which is wonderful. And of course, I'm dying to know what that September project is, but you can't tell me now, can you? No, <laughs> you gotta wait. <laughs> well, uh, you, you know, uh, keep keep me informed and maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have a reason to have you come in and talk again. That's right. Yeah, because that would be that would be a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, Elizabeth Ellis Riley, Haley Marie Elgood. Uh, who are who are both working? So Elizabeth is a a regular curator. How long have you been there in this in this job? Ten years, eleven years, eleven years. Oh yeah, okay, long termers. Um, uh, she is the curator of the photographic archives at Archives and Special Collections at the University of Louisville, and also talking to us, Haley Marie Elgood, project archivist, who was hired just to work on the Jewish Freeman project, which I think is like what a, what a plum thing. Anyway. Um, and the show is the graphic pioneer, the early poster designs of Jewish Friedman, 1965 to 1980. And once again, opens on July 14th at the Ekstrom Library. There's a ribbon cutting and dedication because that gallery has been uh, uh, kind of remodeled and, and juiced up and it's now going to be called the Jewish Friedman Gallery, uh, July 14th at 5.30 p.m. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Keith. Thank you.